Let, let's cap off. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. I want this to be just like a pantomime. This is great. I said, Hello, everybody. <laughs>
Uh, more development chats with the likes of Jeff and the guys, the guys doing the game, and more time with you guys doing live chats, FAQs, all the kind of questions and answers. That's not going to stop, and not only that, it's going to increase. We're going to do way more than we can, as much as we possibly can in terms of uh, interaction. The French guys, Leo, this is amazing. This is like seriously why I love Leo. The whole week this week, the French office has been moving. And this weekend and Monday, they're moving offices to big, big, brand new amazing offices. And where is Leo? In London. <laughs> <laughs> somehow managed to dodge. Somehow managed to dodge all the heavy lifting, all the moving stuff. So there will be a studio getting set up in Paris as well. Yes, absolutely. So we'll be able. You won't just have Leo on a webcam or just one camera. You'll have them on multiple cameras. Which means the next Kickstarter will be even more interesting. Leo from multiple angles. Yeah, almost. Yes, we could almost do that. But yes. We are really, well, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've improved uh, uh, our campaigns uh, from one year to another. Kickstarter year. actually emailed us and said, we really like how you switched the cameras and have really good quality video. How did you do that? That's not a joke. <laughs> they actually emailed us this week asking us. Well, actually, we... the people from Kickstarter really follow us, uh, especially in our lives, and they are, they are really in contact with us and trying to fix everything. And they're really, really uh, happy to have us. My suggestion to have a special as selfie, you know when you press the selfie button you can take selfies, I want one specifically for me, it's, it's on the books. <laughs> so, more ambassadors. Ambassadors, hands up. You're probably down with all these amazing gentlemen here today. Thank you. ambassadors across the UK, France, Belgium, Netherlands and Sweden. It would be an understatement to say that I have triple digit ambassador figures in my mailbox of people wanting to be ambassadors, but they currently outnumber us over two to one. Uh, we will be looking to expand it in the future, but we couldn't do stuff like this without the ambassadors. You guys make it even remotely possible. Um, and it means the world just. So the hope is that this will be the first of many events in the UK, and we'll continue to do the same kind of support for France and Belgium and Netherlands, and then look to expand it in the future. We will be at Essen, we will be at Gen Con as well, and um, so we're going to continue pushing that. If anyone's interested, please by all means come and speak to me or, or drop me an email. Um, at the moment, I want to get a few more members in the team before we have any more ambassadors, though, so it might be just <laughs> curtailing it for a little bit. More conventions in 2018 as well. We had UK Games Expo, it was the very first time we'd ever been there. It was an absolutely amazing show. Yeah. I unfortunately forgot to put the picture in of Chris jumping mid-air. I wanted that picture for this one. I could do it again. You could do another one for us before we finish, yeah, for sure. Um, this was an amazing show. I know many of you actually were there, and hopefully a lot of you will see that the game, the like Solomon game, for example, has changed so much in a month. Like so much development has gone into change since then. And a lot of that was part again to feedback that we got from people who then even tried it and let us know the thing. So we will be at more conventions, we will be at Tabletop Gaming Live, um, just outside London. Yeah, Alexander. Yeah. 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 Alexander Palace. Oh, thank you, guys. Uh, at the end of September, so that's gonna be good. What about Mythic Day UK? Yeah. 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 What about Mythic Day UK? Yeah. Yeah. We want to do more UK events, we want to do some of our own stuff. That's going to happen. It is. It is. Um, <laughs> talking about Mythic Days, before we look at the UK too much, we have Mythic Day 2018 uh, coming up. Uh, it's in the south of France on, on the 8th of September, and it is a community organised thing. Although we go and every single member of the Mythic Games team is going to be there. It is a community organised thing. It's done by a few guys who have in the South of France who just love what we do, and they organise the whole thing themselves. So they, they bring everyone together for demos, for uh, tournaments, for uh, painting classes, for competitions, and just for the, the kind of fun. The medieval content. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a I'm not going to try and say where it's kept. I noticed like, I left it out of the slide because I didn't want to try and say <laughs> couvent de... No. Le couvent des minimes. Uh, so, so uh, there are still tickets for this one. This is obviously going to be September 8th. If any of you are interested, as I mentioned, a bunch of the things that are going on there will be really cool. There's so a bunch of hot over there also, but not inside the comment itself. It's, it's fresh. I did put this on, so the, the social stuff's nice. You, know, you get to chat to people, you get to meet the team, you know, all the good stuff. There is gorgeous weather, as Leo mentioned, and we put a picture of the gorgeous weather. This is like the France in September. Some of us, though, Aren't such big fans of the gorgeous weather. <laughs> Last year, the only place you could get Wi-Fi was in the sun. Um, the convent is made of four inch thick bricks. You know, it's 100 years old, I don't know, 400 years old, sorry. Um, 
and you can't get Wi-Fi anywhere. It doesn't penetrate the bricks at all. So the only place there was Wi-Fi was out of this little small window <laughs> in a corner in the sun all day. And the only way I could edit videos was to use my hoodie as a stand. Wonder who that handsome guy was, obviously. <laughs> yeah. this, this is my weekend, look, I normally just cover the face, you know. Um, so, minute day, UK. It's going to depend on you guys, really. Is there their interest? We hope so. We hope next year that we can do something independent with just ourselves and, and brought together for everyone. We'll try not to do it in the middle of July, maybe. We'll try and do it in January when it's snowing. Or March when it's snowing in the UK. <laughs> So Solomon Cain, Babis is going to come in and have a bit of a chat. I think this, this for me is a really big thing because Babis uh, and Dale and Steve have just joined the team giving Jeff some much needed support um, to try and work at a game that's going to have over 2,000 cards, multiple stories, multiple narrative paths. So I kind of wouldn't feel right if I didn't kind of get my little Babis. I'll hold it because you know what's coming up. That picture of you and a tutu is coming up. Uh, just to chat a little bit about what's happened to Solomon Cain in the past year. So, as you guys may have noticed, there have been many changes in Solomon Cain, I would say, in general. So, the best thing that we as a development team tried to do was to actually make the very nature of the game, and that was being a narrative game shine out as such. So that's why we actually included, uh, invented and put into the game the discovery cards. So you, you have played with those, you have seen those. There are so many cards that actually set the scene and share some extra information about what's going on in the game. So what we intend to do is actually offer that sense of mystery and get you as players want to learn more about it and find some things through those cards. So we want to keep the game as mysterious as it can be, but still be as exciting when it gives you the, the excitement of actually discovering something in the first place. So. Uh, we really try to include much more mechanisms that make the game truly interactive and, that, and we also try to include other mechanisms that make the game much more uh, immersive for you. And you, have, you haven't seen all of it yet, but we really working, we're really working front of you on that and we really we really want to thank you about your feedback, your love, and everything that you're giving us. Because it's a bumpy ride, but it's a, in the end, it's going to be really, really rewarding for both you and us. So by all means, if you have anything to add to that, feel free to direct it to us. Thank you. Ambassadors to make prototypes for 30 people to go out and demo with three, four, five months ahead of it even hitting Kickstarter is because we want to get other people's notice. It's not enough for us just simply to do videos. The game has yeah. evolved a lot and it will still continue to evolve till it's released. <laughs> and, uh, we are so confident about, well, we are so eager to see how people will react when they receive this game uh, because it's, it's a game that is different from uh, any other games you've seen, honestly. It's, uh, it's both narrative and uh, it's both a board game and it's a uh, puzzle and a challenge. Yeah. And a, yeah, I must admit, it's seeing different people approach it. My personal view is I'm quite a puzzly guy. I'm not much of a narrative. I like just working out the best way to get the meta things. You might guess that. <laughs> I, like to, I like to delve in that way. And I've seen different people approach the game in completely different ways. And it's super engaging to see all you guys doing it. The amount of people I've seen play the game two or three times and say, Lost the first time, but I got a major victory the second time. Like that really gets me better. We, we had quite a lot of people who played the game at UK Games Expo, and who came to try the same game again with the new uh, evolution, and they loved it. So it's. I know I see a, I see a few faces of people who are here at UK Games Expo. Anyway, 
We gave a bit of a, well I gave a bit of a roasting to Olivia at the start of this about Solomon's, uh, Solomon's pistol being half cocked. But Olivia, for any of you who don't know, did a lot of the major songs. Darkness, Providence, the Gorilla, among, among many, many others. We have Eric as well. Uh, the, the pirates. We'll not talk about Solomon again. Solomon's fully caught. Those are good ones. Um, have a few images for you. Said, you know, hopefully you'll recognize them when you see them. Yes. That one in the tower I didn't put in there. Yes, this is the first thing I get. The only thing I get at the beginning. This is uh, the sketch with Stefan. And this is later from uh, Guillaume. Uh, so Guillaume Pontulupi, who is our lead artist on, on Solomon Cain. I think obviously many of you have seen the work, all the art that we have in the posters. Please help yourself to them, please, as you do. Uh, or as you say. Uh, he did all the art for this, so this is literally what you had to... Basically, so when you start artists. with this, you do the first masses, right? The, uh, Basically, I do a, a naked version to get the anatomy right. And then later... Do you have the naked version? <laughs> <laughs> Nine o'clock. <laughs> 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 do stretch goals next time. <laughs> this is the clothes. This is the the, the appliance of uh, clothes to set up, basically. Uh, and to make it look good. Now you're gonna do. Now you're gonna. It all starts. You know she's naked. <laughs> <laughs> You might have to press play on that one with these crew in. Oh, this is the just wonders just of technology. Come on, you can do it, please. Oh, okay. so the little short one. Yeah, the elements basically. Yeah, that's a part of the making. <laughs> 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 so why is why do you do it like this? Why is it all from the park like that? Yeah, uh, that's just for showing people. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well now you know not what not to say when you go for your 3D sculpting interview. You don't say, I picked them up like this. Um, but this is basically just a refinery of the sandwich of the elements. Yeah. And how long, how long from art then to what well, I'm hoping is going to be a finished piece in the set? Yeah, well, about, about a week, depending on the and corrections back and forth. Let's get this time for me out there. Back me up here. A week. A week. Let's. So four, four virtues, darkness, providence, so six weeks for the six million. Yes. Yes. Maybe because. Have you any advice for anybody who would want to get in this? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Kill time, Olivia. Uh, well, don't count your hours, and uh, it's a passion, so. It's fun, it's great. I'm not good to I would say, if any of you have any opinions on, on the skulls, speak to Olivia, because Olivia works from home. He doesn't usually get to spend a lot of time around people. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Tech Team. Uh, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't usually uh, get to see the feedback from people in person. Uh, comments on Kickstarter BG obviously are lovely, but to have someone actually tell them what they love about something, or why they're really wrong, yeah. is also very important. So, that kind of stuff, please, good or bad, he's here, get him. Okay, go on, there you go. Thanks, Olivia. Oh, there you go. which is something very unusual. You don't see that with many games. So it's just another proof that the people who support us are very committed and very friendly. And we, we can't thank you uh, enough. One thing I'll actually mention, because a few of you 
we've actually talked to you about this, is the competitive side of Joan of Arc. We'll have the first, the first Joan of Arc tournament will be at midnight day on the 8th of September. Can you, can you tell us a little bit? It's going to be 32 people, so 16 tables. It's going to be Swiss. We're going to do four rounds of Swiss with a final table. Just two people are going to, are going to map out for the last spot. We're going to be working on specific uh, balance scenarios that are going to basically have really focus on competitive play, objective play, holding areas, area control. These kind of things that you'll be familiar with if you're into 40k, if you're into privateer press stuff, if you're into Flames of War, these competitive games, we're going to be looking at trying to make that, that battle mode of Joan of feel like that. But this is going to be our first little test at Mythic Day in September. I don't what, think what it will last. What, what about the final? The final? I don't know. <laughs> Stop that. Come, you have to buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or watch it. Hopefully, we'll have it recorded. Uh, I'm not sitting in the sun video. There are some big surprises. Awesome. Yeah. Marco report. Uh, after Jonah Burger, of course, we have Solomon McK. I don't think I need to say any more about it. We, we all know we're all here to kind of get a, a demo for it. But what's coming next? The wings. Look, look, look. All night, it's like people. Oh. <laughs> I would feel bad if I didn't get something really good away at our first UK event. And if I didn't do it, I wanted to steal some spotlight from you. So coming in the future is something related to this. Ooh. 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 And we're going to be going... Uh, yeah, yeah. Keep avoiding the words. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> you know the guys who will uh, have those, right? Uh, so yes, in this game, yeah, you can yeah you can you can have a look at. Uh, so we've never shown this to anybody. These are just some pre-concept. Uh, so yeah, you, you have an idea of what it is. What, what is that's this contain? This is a mystery. And, uh, so, this is history. Anyone want to guess what part of this and the answer coconuts is not correct? <laughs> so Brill. Oh, um, the Brill. Hey, what was that? Brill. What's that? It's a difference from who invented it. Someone wrote it in the sci fi region. It's the energy from the Eternal energy? Interesting, interesting. So, yeah. Um, what, what I can say about this game is, as we usually do, it will be very different from uh, all of the other games that we've done. Uh, that we have a terrific uh, art team. I really, 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 really like the art, uh, the uh, the story behind it, and the kind of game uh, that we have. Uh, it will be a very heroic, fast-paced game. Uh, we can say the scale, don't we? Yeah, we can say the scale. It will be 32 minimum. Right? Uh, so compatible with most of the games uh, on the market. But with some nice big. But with big, yes, with big miniatures and not only this one. Okay, so. <coughs> so it's going to be, a, is it a type of game? Like yes, that? yes, it's yes. It's going to be a cooperative game. Yes, because you will not play the bad guys in this game. Uh, the bad guys will be the ones that you want to get rid of, that you want to eliminate. And, well, we can't say too much without spoiling. Uh, well, but you will play so it. Spoil it then! You'll play some uh, epic heroes, yes. is what we can say. Yes, so, uh, from really the war, and not everybody knows about what, what is really happening in this world. And, the pop, and these heroes, the ones you will play, are about to discover it. So, this is some examples of uh, the heroes we have. So, this is a uh, Russian sniper. <laughs> Uh, so we, we have different poses until we find what we like, so these are the early sketches and then we work uh, on that. But yes, you will play a group of heroes here. Uh, I'm too excited for the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. We really can't wait to see what happens. We really, it's very hard not to get too much away with this, we have our artists are working over time. We again have... Could, could we yeah. see who the artist is? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the artist, his name is Catalin Lattis. And he's uh, the art director of Gameloft. Maybe oh, you've okay. heard of Gameloft. And uh, he worked on Band of Brothers 3. You know? So he knows Second World War very well. And he's so much into this project. He's working full time with us until it's finished. And he's not the only artist, but he will design, he will design the characters. And so, yes, it's going to be uh, a very heroic game, uh, almost with a, a pulp feel uh, about it. Uh, and, and discovery and mystery. You will you will go somewhere and you don't know what you will see and slowly step by step you will see that and you will have to be really heroic. So it's it's a cooperative game, but it's completely different from a uh, solo game. It has nothing to do. Although there is also uh, this scenario. The <laughs> <laughs> best that you so far. <laughs> Yeah, this is a Well, no, we have this. Oh, work in progress. Still, Olivier, who did that. Uh, actually, it has changed since uh, this version, but this is an uh, almost finished version, and you can see that uh, there will be a lot of details on uh, on our minis. And, uh, and yes, we like uh, female he heroes and. Uh, this one is going to be badass. There will be definitely uh, characters that you can all delve into that will perhaps get some style of play or something about you that you maybe want to really embrace. There's going to be a lot of things that I think people can just go, I know exactly the way. And just looking at that guy, right? He's going to play at the tabletop. There'll be a bunch of things that'll be very energetic, very high impact, very much focusing on everyone working together to kind of. Um, but it will not always be that easy. They, as they have said, they're not always going to know what they're going to be up against until it's right on top of them. Until they're in the. Maybe it's. Thanks, Dash. I've gone off again. When? Sometime. 
definitely some facts. Of course you can, ask a question on the previous slide. The text in the frame, is that carved in? Olivia? Yes. Thank you. So is there not any questions about coconuts that we can <laughs> we'll try and we'll try answer until that happens? Yeah. Um, you know, usually we. We. <laughs> 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 So just for the camera game, so there's a lot of uh, World War II based games, the likes of PlayStation and digital games how, that have been translated to board games as well, of course. How is this going to differ from those what's going to make it unique? Well, the game mechanics is different. Uh, also, it's a universe that we really created. So uh, it's, not, it's not like a copy of something existing. It's all over, of course, because it's World War II and with this weird aspect of this, this thing. You will, you can always find some similarities here. Yeah, yeah that's that's the key because if you know, we had in Joan of Arc, we had Leo, we had Jack making an appearance in Song of Cain, we had again Leo making an appearance as the the town crier. This is this is now our own IP. We're going to kind of be able to do whatever we want with this, which means we can really break the mold a little bit with the kind of characters we make and what we do. So I think so that'll be our design. There will be some uh, something that you're familiar with, but then there will be some real surprises. There will be things. Absolutely, do not expect to see. So, what's inside? That's what I'm saying. Would it, would it be a, a sort of a franchise, or is it sort of a one-off? Oh, uh, well, depends on you guys. Yes, yes. Yeah. it depends on the success. Oh, honestly, we well, so far we we're surprised at the the, the the feedback we got already. You know, so if it turns out to be a successful game, as with all our games, we would like to continue. So, but we won't go into that until we see how it's it received. You know? But yes, it, it definitely has the potential to do uh, a true. Yes. Is this being launched through Kickstarter? I'm going to have to raise the hands in this classroom. <laughs> <laughs> is it being raised through Kickstarter? Is so it being launched through Kickstarter? Yes, it will be a Kickstarter game. And if so, would you consider doing a bespoke figure for someone as an add-on? So that they could design their own character? <laughs> uh, so are you thinking like uh, a small number of pledges of the Kickstarter campaign where you have custom characters? Is that what you need? Well, you are just going to get to Luxembourg for a week and spend a week with the living agents. Luxembourg's not a big place. What we can tell is uh, we want a smaller, uh, shorter campaign, uh, a smaller scale game, uh, meaning that well, it will be a bit smaller than a solar cable. But uh, that doesn't mean you won't have a lot of gameplay for this game. We have got a different modes, for instance. No, <laughs> but yes. But, <laughs> yes. If we, want, we want the gameplay value to be really, really good. Uh, what you will not be able to do, you will not be able to play the Nazis. That's, yeah. that's for sure. These are the bad guys to eliminate, so you will play against them, uh, maybe you can access some of their stuff. We had a lot of questions on the Kickstarter campaign for Solomon Cain. Like, why don't the virtues text to you? Why doesn't Solomon Cain level up? Why doesn't why can't Solomon throw his sword away and pick up a brick and throw it at someone? I mean, it doesn't fit. Solomon Cain. You know, it's not that's not him and his stories. He's always Solomon Cain. That's as he is. But we haven't ignored those questions. Before. 
Oh, but long story short, probably not a new group and to custom them. Yeah. We, we are. Well, I, yeah. Possibly this game, well, we are really thinking of having this game in retail as well as Kickstarter, so not the Kickstarter exclusive. Yeah, as I mentioned before, um, Someone came with the retail pledges for the first time. We thought, you know what, we need to start contacting retailers, the likes of GSC here at Warmore, and say, we want to come out with you guys, run the demos, you know, be part of your community, and support the friendly local game stores. And we were blown away. The amount of interest we had in the retail pledges was unbelievable. We actually had to hire uh, Chris uh, on board to literally handle the amount of requests that we had. It was astronomical. And uh, my thoughts just exploded. It was unbelievable. So we definitely want to continue down that route. Um, we have still details to iron out. We have likes of Gen Con and Essen to come, which gives us a great opportunity to talk to people in the industry, see what we can do, so we make sure our shipping is good, if we go retail, make sure distribution is good. Um, so we'll definitely be looking to support retail with, with the next coming. I know you said the name. Jeez. What's the What's the type of uh, um, sort of solo play brought up to how many players? Or like a so, for the camera, what's the plan for solo play rolling up to how many players up to the maximum of? Uh, <laughs> There'll be something. <laughs> There'll, be, There'll be something. We'll not, we'll not ignore it. That would be possible to play with different numbers of players. Like every few months, every single one of us in the company will just get an opportunity to kind of create a little brief. And we all take like a day, half a day to kind of put some stuff together on paper that we have going over. And I think the last one we had like seven or different briefs that went around that we shared them amongst the company. We all have a chin and about them, talk about them, and then we kind of go, oh, essentially, Leo and Benoit own the company, but we all as a company were very close to together. They actually we think this has the potential. And that was. And each game has a story. For instance, for this one, this is an idea that we had for a, a long time ago, and it didn't, didn't fit, at, fit the time. at the time, and now it is the time. It's like Solomon Kane. Solomon Kane was uh, at the same time as Mythic Battles, uh, really, it was uh, at this time, and then it wasn't finished at this time, but then, you know, we, we were still thinking about it, and then it comes back, and it's the same with this. Each game has a story, we need to uh, flesh out, yes, flesh out and take but the we, time to map, to, we, we started looking at artists and people who get the initial concept done when we start saying yes, this is the direction we want to go. We did that in like three months ago. Uh, and we started kind of getting testers and people to say, before we looked at that, and we said, yes, actually, this is the style we want. So we've had a lot of concepts done before we said, yes, this is now the direction we're going. Um, so, yeah, uh, each game has, has its history, and then we take the time. And now that the, the company has grown bigger, uh, it takes less time for us to, to complete the game. And this is why we're constantly working on new things and even some other games. And we usually try to really want to focus on the, the current game or the, the upcoming one before we, yeah. we, we speak of the others because we really uh, we really need to what we're doing. But we, we have to anticipate also. To put it into kind of comparison for you guys to really see uh, perspective, Benoit, obviously, if you're Company um, had the Mythic Battle, but his, his design game was a solo thing. And um, then we had Temple Legends to Embark, and that was Pascal Bernard who helped us a lot in design for that. He was essentially external. He, he came to Mythic Games with the same idea, and we helped him make that happen. The Solomon Key and Jet drove a lot, it comes drove a lot of that from the get go, and now we're bringing in support. Now we're looking at this game, we're in a fourth different iteration. Now we have a proper in house dev team. We have four guys with potentially a couple more bits of support coming in for them as well, with the guys in France too. Now we can turn something around. Now we can actually start digging in a bit more and, and bringing these things to fruition that we keep talking about. So, from gear to game, it's changed a lot, however, we go from idea to actual product. Um, so, how long has it been in development? This one? This new game, yeah. I think physically stuff about three months, but before that, it was. It was seven months ago when we actually started putting the brief to people. Yes, but the first time we had an, a similar idea was probably two years ago. See? So that means we've had the time to, you know, even private conversation with Jake, you know, saying, oh yes, we could do this, we could do a fast-paced game, oh, and then some ideas come, and you know, it stays there, so it's not lost time, it's something that really uh, helps when you, 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 you come back after it. The, the, the creation process is not like, okay, let's stop, let's make a game now. It needs time to, to think about it, to... Uh, to discuss, to exchange with, with people, and this is 
why I'm confident with this one too, it's because it's like the other games we've, we've done, it's, it's been, uh, how could I say? It's, 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 it's fit when it's needed to. We, this has come together because we've found the artist that we wanted, and also we've potentially found the company yes. that we want to produce the things that we want. Some of the ideas about this game uh, on just did not come now. You know, some of the ideas were... Uh, Waiting on the backwards. Yes. So, where did you get the inspiration? Have you drawn from any other games? I'll uh, introduce you to Captain Know Everything World War II, Jack Thornton, who is a <laughs> fountain of knowledge when it comes to this stuff. It would just, if you want to buy a man uh, a drink and just sit down for four hours and educate yourself, Jack is the man to teach you everything you want to know about anything. Um, but the inspiration, I think, initially came from Jack's. If you ever see Jack's little brown book, or it was, used to be black, but you go through them pretty quickly. If you ever catch Jack in a tree, it's got a little book. You never get your hand on that little book, you'll probably see our next 62 weeks. <laughs> 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 there are some pictures there are pictures of Jack on the Eurostar with a table where he's put his wife aside, she's over there, and he's just gone woof. And he's just covered the whole table in notes because he's developing all the time. So the, the funny thing with Jake, you, you start mentioning something uh, uh, about an idea, and he <laughs> <laughs> And next week he comes and says, that thing you said in passing when we're getting more of the day, what developed it into a game? It's not a joke, it's really a really joke. So, going back to the first question, what about yeah. theatres of war? Is it going to be just in Europe? Is it going to be everywhere? Is it going to be in the that's a really interesting question. Uh, theaters of War, where, where may it take place? Well, that's a good question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Do you have an idea of what game service you're going to use? Like, tiles are on, and what sort of... What are you going to be playing it on? So what, what, what is the board? What is the... Yeah. It's going to be a board game. So, absolutely. It's, it's, it's not a tabletop board game. Yeah. But it's... It's not tile based. Thanks. You saw we have before, it's had lots of games about World War II. There are again lots of games about World War II, which are essentially dungeon crawlers with World War II outfits on. And one of the kind of visual keys for that is that they often have tile layouts. Like, like you know, it's like Fly on the West with MP40. So, that's right, you heard it here first, guys. We're doing more Hammer Quest than before. It's going to be massive. We're not doing that approach. It's a different, slightly different approach visually, so the table reference is different. Are you intending to discuss this? We have had. We've discussed this in this one a lot. So I'll, I'll say this quite openly as, as part of the guy that organizes our events. We will be demoing and showing off this game at Essen. Uh, which means we've had to think a lot about what kind of emblems and stuff that we in the game. We will be making sure it is culturally appropriate for every country that we ship to. We, we, no. Go on. Yes, yes, no. yes, no. yes. No. Well, you know, at Mythic, at Mythic Day, you will be able to resemble the game. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want it! <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's true that it's, uh, it's, it's a game with a thing that we know is, uh, how would you say, it's uh, sensitive. sensitive. Yeah, sensitive. Yeah, sensitive. So we really want to make sure we will be very cautious about that. So this is why maybe our uh, journey is taking off. Yeah, 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 and we're sensitive, and we don't want to. Yeah, we'll take just a bit green blood. So yeah, first of all, green blood, just scramble egg. Compares. <laughs> Compared to some other games where we can do like public demos everywhere, we will not, we we'll probably not do that, and we will do, we'll make very sure that. We yeah, we want to, we want to control this and make sure that we are uh, respectful of everything. We're going to be making it big and rash and energetic and fun and exciting, but we also are aware of the content of the time. So the fact that I know the Jacobs and the Bush Legion is probably that. Surely they'd be crime fighters. No, Any other questions? It's going to be smaller than some of the games. So essentially, we're, we're going for a slightly smaller project to give our, our, our game dev team time to get the best team and cohesion together. So it will be probably less than some of the Would it be story driven or skirmish? Those are interesting words, both of which will probably feature. <laughs> <laughs> Both things.
<laughs> is the attempt for a time of legends two after this? It's, well, it's, it's definitely a constraint. We, we really don't want to see two. How people react to, to time of legends when they receive it. If, if they are happy with it, then yes, we will do something. If Jason from Warhol can tell me how we can put a 40 kilogram project proper on some shelves and have a dozen copies of them, then we're going to do it. We'll talk after. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to absolutely. We're going to be mad to work kind of legends in some way, shape, or form, but can't say. We can't say. Yeah, yeah, the, the reckoning. Yeah, it's all we can do, the reckoning is coming your way. Uh, any other questions? Oh. So, you reviewed kind of a little bit about Time Legends 2, but you said the setting, that wasn't real, like... But, uh, what I really want to know is it's going to be fully compatible with the first Time of Legends. Uh, I think pretty sure. And anything we do in the Time of Legends brand would absolutely... So, you have the Time no? of Legends? No. And you have the legendary skill. You have the legendary skill. So it's not in itself. It's a much more complicated answer than yes or no. We've got time. Of legends! We've had a literal ton of requests for kind of legends, analog, kind of legends, procedures, kind of legends, shogun, like. We've heard them all, we've discussed a lot. <laughs> have you decided on one? You have time of legends and you have the legendary scale. And yes, uh, we will have some other games using the legendary scale. It depends on it. But not until this one, the first one has been delivered. So this is why we have Last chance? Not last chance, I mean we're going to be here for another few hours until we're chucked out by Jason, but... Okay, cool. At least Name and when? <laughs> no. No. Gen Con. That's a rubbish name. And <laughs> 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 um, we will have something in the not too distant future. Will you post up that solar cable with this game in there? Uh, will we, what's that? Will you post up that solar cable with the game in there? Um, we, yeah, essentially, we, we, this is a good question for you guys to come to us afterwards and talk to us about it. Because at the moment, we generally do a What's Up Wednesday, every single Wednesday, we're putting off date. What we're kind of going to try and do as we develop more games and our catalogue increases is turn that What's Up Wednesday into more a What's Up kind of Wednesday method. So, you get five, ten minutes or a little bit of a paragraph about what's happening with Jonah Rocky, a little bit of a paragraph, a little bit of five minutes of something, what's happening with Solomon Cain, what's happening with Future Projects. Because what we don't want to do is if you back Solomon Cain, you hear about every single other project we ever do, we bombard you with it. That's not really hard to want to communicate with people. But we want to do more lives, we want to do more videos. So I think in the future, I'll be coming out to you guys through Facebook and through our website and through the, the Kickstarter updates saying, we're going to try some new things. And I can happily tell you that one of the things we're definitely going to be looking so instead of just saying, here, here's a block of text, what we have in, we'll say, let's take 10 minutes to chat about what's happened with someone, let's take 10 minutes to chat about what's happened with someone, and then let's take 10 minutes to talk about what's happened with someone, and whatever comes next. And so, we will be exploring that. We will talk about the release of the next game, both in the Mythic Games page, and we'll also put it up on the Tony Gardner Solomon game, because it is such a big thing. Thank you. All right, well, I'll cut it there. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming and sharing.